they're on twitter talking mm -hmm. and attacking people for not buying the product they kept on pushing even though they themselves are not buying it i'm a bird mother i'm a bird Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So over the past couple of Hi, days Rip. since its release on the 19th, Hello, a lot of people have been talking about Black Myth Wukong. However, don't let the success of this game distract you from the fact that just one day later, another very impressive mm, game mm, was released. Mm, mm, I'm it's the best game ever. Like, you never seen a better game. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Wukong is trash. Plays Dustborn. Mm. And get triggered. Yes. We're talking about game of the year potential here, <laughs> Dustborn. So a lot of people have been talking about this, including some reviewers at IGN who gave this a 7 out of 10 rating. Think about that. Just one point lower than Black Myth Wukong's 8 out of 10 rating from IGN. So it must be a pretty good game, right? Well, no. There's a reason why this game has gotten the label the wokest game ever. And I have to agree with that label. And quite predictably, with a title like that, it completely flopped. Dead on arrival, terrible release. And before we talk about the details of this game, <laughs> I am not surprised. I remember someone brought it up in the channel. In uh, I mean, in chat and asked us to react to the trailer. I lost my shit. I literally, I choked on air and almost died. It was so bad. I just want to make a little editorial note here. I have never seen a game with a digital footprint that is as cooked as Dustborn, okay? You go to any social media platform right now and they're making fun of this game. I, I feel like if you went to MySpace, you would see people making fun of Dustborn right now. So what is this game? Well, here is the description on Steam. Dustborn is a single player story driven action adventure game about hope, love, friendships, robots, and the power of words. You play Pax, okay. Exile, Con Artist, okay. Anomal with the ability to weaponize language. Looking for a new life and a way out, Pax has been hired to transport an important package from Pacifica to Nova Scotia across the justice-controlled American Republic. Sounds like a legit- I believe in power of words as well. You know, words like harder, deeper, faster. <laughs> oh, man. Can I take this shit seriously? Like, this, this just seems like a cop-out, like someone created this game just to, just to make a skit. So basically they go on, yada, 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 and they say uh, you're playing the role of a, a group of punks who are fighting back against the tyrannical American regime. And you're fighting them with, with words because that's super punk rock and awesome and mm. cool. But anyways, mm -hmm. you okay. see this section mm. here about weaponizing language and boy, howdy, were they not. I don't really think they understand what punk rock even is or punk. Yeah, this was a disrespect to the music genre. Oh, punk is not just a music genre. You do understand that, right? It's a lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. Not misleading you with that. It is the main feature they're trying to sell you on with this game. So here the section underneath says, The power of words. Words have power, like actual power. Fight with shouts and use vox in conversations to manipulate people and talk your way out of hairy situations. Craft new words and learn to wield a, ling a lingual arsenal against enemies and friends Ooh, is that a little foreshadowing to the story here keeping me on the edge of my seat here but anyways yeah this is a, a, a we're playing skyrim boys in this game and uh this is really what happens when you're terminally online and don't have real problems you end up with something like this uh but there's two things they they promote this game with right they have the description then they show this and then the only other thing they show you is a diverse cast of characters so okay you, you guys aren't sold on the game yet? I mean, why not buy this game, right? They already took European taxpayer money without taxpayers knowing that their money is going towards it. Basically, that's all they have to bring to the table. That there's uh, words being used as weapons and a diverse cast of characters. Like, that's great. But anyways, who made this, right? Who is behind this? Well, it is a Norwegian indie studio named Red Thread Games. Now, what is their motivation for mm, creating mm, Dustborn? Mm, mm. Well, we know b based on a representative who revealed that this game was largely inspired by the election of Donald Trump. Yes, the 2016 American presidential election was the inspiration for this game. These people got so mad about Trump getting elected 
that they made this game based off of it. Basically, this is their coping mechanism. Okay? This Bro, game what? was literally born of Trump derangement syndrome. Oh, what? the way Norway. Norway is the most like anti-social country ever. What? what happened? No, it's just that one guy. It's that one guy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the team that worked on it, they're like, I don't want this on my resume. <laughs> I, don't I don't want this. Let that sink in and look at the effect on art when basically that is the primary motivation you're working on a game. It turns out to be a pretty bad product. Now, let's go to the 20th. This is the official release date of Dustborn. So you can oh see my. the official launch trailer was released onto YouTube with 77,000 views. That's pretty solid, but you'll notice it only has 500 likes. That is a very disproportionately low. Hmm. Very, very suspicious. I wonder why. No amount of likes for that many views. And it's because people are clowning on this game. These are just the first comments that show up. I'm not cherry picking. These are just the first ones. So let's read a few of them. My pronouns are bankrupt slash loss. Uh, I'm getting my wife's boyfriend bought me this game vibes. Damn, even Suicide Squad <laughs> oh. had more players. More comments on here than players on Steam. All the swearing in the trailer, it's like a middle school kid trying to prove they're tough. And they weren't <laughs> kidding. Ruger, I'm about to have a laughing fit. With this section right here about more comments on here than players on Steam because here's the official results. Uh, yeah, it peaked out at 76 players. They could barely fill a, a corner of a cafeteria with that peak number of players. It's absolutely insane. This was a horrible flop. Total waste of time. And also, there are some uh, scenes of this game that are going viral on Twitter because of how just outrageous. You do understand the fact that there's only 70 something globally playing this game? That means that even people who don't use social media or check videos like this, they have no idea about any of this discourse. They mm -hmm. looked at the game and went, this is garbage. And I just cannot wait for them to start blaming the small YouTube channels again. Saying that these small YouTube channels are responsible for people not buying games. Like, bro, what? Outrageous they are. So this is like a nine second clip. I just want you guys to watch a small sample. And there it is. The trigger clip of what you can see in Dustborn. The only way I would play this game if I would be forced to do that. With, oh my uh, god. The black kid dresses like a writer. Does he know anything? <laughs> are racist. This is like the second or third time I've Bro. said this this week. Wait, uh, we are living why, in a that's... South Park parody. In fact, I think reality is starting to get even more ridiculous than the South Park parodies because <laughs> This whole uh, triggered function is literally what they had in South Park, the fractured but whole the, with the microaggression function. Like, it's literally a joke. Like, I can't think of anything that really captures the modern Western gaming industry. Like, you you cannot, like, this is like, do they not understand that they will be mean and shred to death with this? Then this right here. This is the consequences of allowing studios like this to create games unquestioned for so long and the fact that games journalists and those like them have been promoting this stuff. It's an absolute joke. This took years to produce and this is the outcome and it's really, really embarrassing and rightfully years. getting dunked. How did this game take years? I'm sorry, I keep pausing and going on rounds, but how, how did this take years? I do not believe it. This... Took us two people, two people. Keep in mind, two people worked on it. This took us less than a week. We're having no knowledge what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also had this of like actually showing how the movement would be in it. 
And again, I'm reminding people, less than a week. This is less than a week. Two people. Funded this game, and I feel like every person should be able to sue the government for it. And mm. she's not lying. Like many other DEI initiatives mm -hmm. and woke games, this was funded by the government. They got 150,000 euros for this game. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine. EU grant, 150,000 euro. Oh, man. And your tax dollars going to this nonsense i would be livid if i found out that that's where my tax dollars are going that's what's happening in many different countries with these studios that are using these dei initiatives and getting government funding as a result but on top of that i just want to pause and read the reviews on steam there's a dichotomy here that is hilarious on the one hand you have the most positive review which is also rated the most funny review and then a recent post okay let's do the uh the positive one it says I like the story and the comic book art style. I really wish these types of games would let you uh, reload and try different dialogue options. Every type of Western adventure game I played only has one save file, and it's really difficult to go back to certain points and make a different choice. Japanese visual novels had this figured out 20 years ago. Why is this so difficult to implement? <laughs> now let's read the, the most... Best example, Persona. ...recent review. <clears throat> this game completely changed my life. After only 10 minutes of playing, I started to question not only my own gender, but also developed a taste for pudgy women with blue dyed hair. I, qu oh, no. I quit my job Bro. and now spend all day doing nothing but playing Dustborn, watching the Acolyte, and waiting for the communist revolution. Also gave me monkey pox. 10 out of 10, <laughs> would buy again. Uh, phenomenal. That, that, that was some poetry right there. But you get the point. A lot of people are clowning on this game. But you know who's not clowning on this game? IGN. Who, like I said earlier anyways. in the video. <laughs> anyways, at this moment, we know IGN's gonna always gonna do bullshit, bull crap like that. IGN, do you guys remember how they claim there's not enough diversity in Wukong? There's no women represented in Wukong, right? How do you explain her? <laughs> Is she a boss? She is already being cosplayed to hell and back. There's no women, right? There's no women. Because yeah. the only woman, women they accept are, according to them, if you look like this, you're not a woman. If you look like this, you're a woman. Gave this game a seven, a pretty solid score, of a course. seven out of 10. Compare mm -hmm. that again to their 8 out of 10 that they gave Black Myth Wukong. That is insane. This should be like a studio shutdown right here. Like IGN should cease to exist just for this reason alone. Comparing these two games and having them so close is unreal. It is unreal. It just shows the unbelievable level of bias in games journalism because how do you give this nonsense a score that's anywhere near Black Myth <laughs> Wukong? But anyways, right. this game has been an absolute disaster, and it really shows that, Jesus. you know, putting all this woke stuff, this virtue signaling and all this into your games produces a product that's not only bad, but one that the modern audience doesn't even show up for. Where is the modern audience, by the way? Everyone talks about that and how they want to care. They're on Twitter. They're on Twitter talking mm -hmm. and attacking people for not buying the product they kept on pushing, even though they themselves are not buying it to the modern audience well guess what the modern audience isn't here they're not showing up they want you to build games a certain way that suits their agenda but they don't actually play the games huh? that's the funniest part they pander to these people who don't even support them in the end they just want virtue signaling points on places like twitter by acting like they care about certain things and putting it into their game and the people they're trying to impress they don't they don't care anyways they don't even tune in but anyways that's going to do it for this video as always feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comments section down below Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Good video. When
really good video, Ryan. Very good video.